Amen and praise God. Welcome to another edition of Time Out with Tony Dyson. And of course, this is Tony Dyson. Praise God. It is now 2010. 2009 is behind us. And um, God seen fit for us to make it to this new year. Many did not make it. But yet, it's like a new day. It's like a new morning to where regardless of if you had a bad day yesterday, you can start fresh this morning. So people of God, what I'm saying is if you had a bad year last year, this is now a new one that God has allowed you to enter. So therefore, whatever that went on last year, it was last year because his grace and mercies are renewed mm -hmm. daily. So since he's given you another chance, I urge you to leave those things bad. See, because what we fail to understand is the good things we tend to carry with us. They're worth keeping. The bad things is what we try to leave behind. So we extract all of our good things out of 2009 and we build upon them. And that mess and the bad things, the bad situations, the bad relationships, the bad habits, the bad actions, the bad attitudes... We can leave that behind. Amen. I'm going to start on today. And before I move forward, um, you have to excuse me on this particular day. I do have a slight cold. I am coughing in, you know, sneezing a little bit. But I will move forward with what God has for me to do. You all just pray for me and pray with me as I move on. Amen. Matthew 4 and 17 states, from that time, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, people of God, as Jesus came out of the wilderness, the first words he said to the people were, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And see, we think of the word repent as in to stand up in church and tell the church I have sin, I repent of my sins and all that. But see, that's yes, that's fine too. But what Jesus was saying as well is change your mind. Change your mind about God. Change your mind about the way that you do things for him. Change your mind about your actions. So as we repent, that means we've changed our mind about the way we've been doing things, about what we've been doing. We've changed our mind to decide, it, to, decide to do the right thing for God. So people of God, so repent means just the changing of your mind but now this is the thing you know a lot of times people are going through things so when they get to church they 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 uh the holy ghost the holy spirit gets upon them and they they dance they shout they cry and you know all that stuff to give god some praise in, in advance and that's very fine and dandy but when you leave that church building when you leave the presence of the ministers, when you leave the presence of the pastors, when you leave the presence of the mothers and the ushers, when you leave the presence of the musicians, when you leave the presence of the rest of the congregation, and you get back home, <laughs> if you put yourself back in that same mess, you have now just limited God's move on your situation see a lot of times the enemy has us feel like God is not going to answer our prayers but see but once you make up your mind God is able to move remember a couple of months ago when I first started this I taught about us being kings and about God being a king as well because Jesus is king of kings so one king cannot and will not enter another king's reign or realm without permission for otherwise that is war amen that's why we have a problem with Satan because this darkness is always trying to intrude the realm of light anyway so if you go home and you pick up that cigarette or pick up that bottle of liquor or lay back into the bed with that person who's cheating on you or who's beating on you or promising to marry you or you know you you go back into your foul mouth conversations now I know we all have things in our life that have strongholds and I know nothing is done overnight 
frequency, but when you practice sin, you become better at it, and it becomes easier for you to do. But if you confront that sin, see, I used to have a very foul mouth. When I decided I want to follow God, what I did was is every time I said a, a curse word, I, will, I would ask God right there, God, I am trying to stop. Please guide my tongue. And over a while, I kn my language started to get better. I would think about what I, what I needed to say before I would say it. And that's how I stopped with my foul mouthness. So my, once my mind was made up, I took the appropriate actions. I didn't just let words slip. Amen. Philippians 3 and 13. Brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended, but there's one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. So notice in here he says, forgetting those things which are behind, which is 2009, that is behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, which is many, which is many of your blessings in this new year. So people of God, we can reach forward. We don't have to keep reaching back, pulling out mess. Philippians 2 and 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And what we have to understand is the mind that was in Christ Jesus was simply to do God's will. Was simply to let God move through him. Was simply to let God's work be done. People, oh God, we all fall short of the glory of God. But we do not have to let that be a hindrance or use it for a crutch. Yes, we're going to do sinful things because the war daily is of the flesh and the spirit. So our spirit man wars with our flesh man daily. And it's a fight. Some, some days we win, some days we lose. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. But understand, even though you may lose a battle, the war has already been won. Amen. So people of God, what I'm saying is on this year, you can look forward to those things ahead. You can press on. You don't have to look back to what 2009 put you through. See, because you got through it. That's why those things are behind you. As I said, good things we tend to want to carry with us. You know, it's kind of like when you're cleaning out the refrigerator. All the good stuff you keep. All the bad stuff, you throw it away and you don't worry about it. So people of God, look forward to those things ahead. God bless you and God keep you. Until the next time.